Russia's invasion of Ukraine now into its fourth week, and Canada has announced new sanctions, this time against 22 Belarusian officials for supporting Russia's invasion. For more on Canada's position, we're joined this morning in studio by Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie. Good morning, Minister. Hi, Matt. Um, first of all, let's start with uh, your meeting with G7 foreign ministers. That happened yesterday. Yes. It, yeah, Ukraine President uh, Vladimir Zelensky has repeatedly called for a no-fly zone. Take us through again. It's the question many people are still asking why Canada and NATO have not agreed to that no-fly zone? Well, first and foremost, what we want to do is to make sure that we do max, the, we, we provide the maximum aid and, and lethal aid to Ukraine without crossing a red line of starting an international conflict. And it is NATO's position and the alliance position's members that if we cross that line through a no-fly zone, then this would trigger an international conflict. So that's why we're against a no-fly zone, but at the same time, we're willing to do everything possible up to that limit. I know that includes new sanctions, too, that we talked about exactly. uh, today. Um, you talk about the aid, you talk about what can be done internationally, too, from pa partners and otherwise uh, for the diplomacy. I want to ask you, too, though, because uh, you, know, you said that the limit of our capabilities was there, and I want to quote, we are not a military power, we're a middle-sized power. Uh, several high-ranking uh, current and former military officials say that statement downplays uh, our military. How do you respond to that? Well, I'm and we are extremely proud of our uh, armed forces. I've seen it myself. I was in Ukraine in January, met with the military there uh, through Operation Unifier that were training Ukrainian troops. I went to Latvia and uh, I saw how much we're doing a great job in leading a NATO mission there. And I was in Romania last week. And so obviously I, I believe in the armed forces, but I also think that they need to be better equipped, better tooled and quickly. And I'm very much aware also that other countries have stepped up the defense budget, such as Germany, to face these challenging times. And I think that we have to do more. Is, is Canada will doing more? And speaking of, does Canada need to do that too? Do we need to increase our defense spending? I think that we need to adapt to the times right now. And we need to make sure that uh, we are protected as a country and that our armed forces are well tooled. So I'll work with my colleague, Minister Anand, on this. And definitely also the finance minister, Christian Frieden. Okay. Um, earlier this week, Russia put you, the Prime Minister, uh, the Defence Minister, on its blacklist, uh, banning you from entering the country, the opposition party, calling on the federal government to expel Russia's uh, ambassador to Canada and to recall Canada's ambassador to Russia. So I guess the question right now is why have we in Canada not expelled Russia's ambassador here right now, given the current conflict? Well, it is important for Canada to have an ambassador in Moscow uh, because we know that right now, little information is getting out of Russia, and we need to know what's going on there. And other G7 countries, the US, the UK, all have an ambassador there. And so we very much know that it is important not only to have that voice of Canada in Russia, but also the eyes and ears on the ground in Russia. And that is why we want to make sure that that is still the case. And there's always reciprocity between countries. When you expel an ambassador, your ex ambassador is expelled. And so we think it is important for Canada to have a, a very important diplomat there. Are you concerned for our ambassador's safety in Russia at this point, given what's happening? We're assessing every day. Obviously, my concern towards our diplomat is, is always extremely high because we have a duty of care and we need to make sure that uh, Alison Leclerc, her, our ambassador there, is, is safe, and, as well as her entire team. But uh, we're in contact, and I've talked to Ellison a, a couple of times already. Uh, I want to ask you, U.S. President Joe Biden calling Russian President Vladimir Putin a war criminal, the harshest condemnation of Putin's actions from any U.S. official. Um, is that Canada's position as well? Is the Russian president a war criminal? But we think that there are war crimes that are being committed in Ukraine. That's exactly why we decided to petition the International Criminal Court three weeks ago to make sure that there would be an investigation and then there would be accountability for Putin's war right now and, and for Putin himself and his regime. And we've decided also to do even more to support uh, Ukraine as a country that is petitioning the International Court of Justice, which is another court, mm -hmm. against Russia. And we're seeing that that has an impact. At the end of the day, what we want is to stop the war, to make sure that the Ukraine uh, government has a strong position at the negotiation table by providing more weapons and more sanctions, and also that there is accountability for these war crimes. Okay, so you talk about those next, but I want to be clear. Are you calling Vladimir Putin a war criminal when war crimes are happening in Ukraine? Well, 
like I said, there is war crimes, there is crimes against humanity, and Putin is in charge of this entire, this entire war. This is his war. It was his decision. He needs to be held accountable. Uh, I want to ask you, too, so you talked about those next steps, and we know that the new sanctions today. What, what are we looking at now here? We're into the fourth week of this conflict. What are Canada's next steps? Well, obviously, there will be more sanctions. We will provide more weapons. We will work, uh, the Minister of Defence, Anita Anand, on this together. Um, we've sanctioned already a 1,000 individuals and entities, but we need to do more. And we need to coordinate with the G7 countries to make that happen, because there can be no loopholes. At this point, we've uh, made sure that banks are, Russian banks are outside of the SWIFT banking system. We've closed our ports. Uh, to Russian vessels. We've closed our airspace. Mm -hmm. We've made sure that there would be no oil imports from Russia. And so we'll continue to do just that because we have to put maximum pressure on Putin and his oligarchs. Florida Paris Minister Mills, Jolie, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank Appreciate you, it. Matt. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.